Okay. This is, this is sort of similar to the early uh, NASA broadcasts, like where you're hearing everything. Well, it's, it's, it's similar to, uh, again, I keep, I keep thinking it's similar to the Felix the Cat doll on the, uh, on the rotating, you know. Fixed it. All right. All right, great. Did I tell you the Felix the Cat story with, um, with me getting to hold that Felix? No. So, so I went over to meet Don Oriolo with David Gerstein. Uh -huh. And they like, hand me the... They hand me that and we're like taking a picture, which I, I don't think I have that picture. But anyway, we're taking the picture and I'm smiling and I'm like nervous holding this thing. <laughs> and then, so I, I look down and I, as I'm giving it back and I look down at my thumb and there's a nice round piece of paint stuck. Oh no, from, oh no. Like trying to put it back on, kind of like Stan Laurel's like trying to put uh, Oliver Hardy's mustache back on and right. Babes in Toyland. And it, it wouldn't stay. I'm like trying to put it back on there and then, Oh, not no. back, and I watched the little piece fall to the ground. Oh no! I finally oh, told him. I told him a couple of years ago that it happened, and, and he's Colin, dead, right? Colin was like, "I hope you didn't wash your fingers. Uh, can you scrape off a little of that for me? I want some of that. I want some of that. I need some of that paint. That black paint uh, that, that was actually on TV in 1929. I, you know. I got a piece of that paint. It's mint. <laughs> <laughs> it's mint right that, that was one of colin's lines we should we should write down all of colin's famous quotes and uh yeah. you know uh make them available to people um yeah. oh you again where where's my cartoons i want them <laughs> well so what we're going to do is we are going to talk about stuff I've, at once uh, do we are we do we think we're good yeah we're good okay all right i think we're good we're going to try it we're going to keep going all right we're podcasting yay we're going to hey. figure it out hey everybody uh, Hello, everybody. So uh, if you have questions, oh, I just realized now I got rid of the uh, one more thing. Open up Twitch. Yeah. And mute the stream. OK, we're going to try one more thing because I realized uh, I have the Twitch. Oh, on. Good luck. <laughs> yeah, it's it's an issue. Hold on a second. Let's see if I can figure this out really, really fast. OK, I'm doing it. That's all right. The 11 people that are watching will be all That's right. That's right. We have 11 people. Do we really? I don't know how many we have. We have 42. We have 42, apparently. We're honest with our numbers here. We've got 42 people. Um, I've Maybe. got it on. There's no echo. I've got the Twitch on. Everything seems to be right. I just got a note from Becca saying that she finished laughing gas. Oh, that's great. It's like, it's like it's done. I thought she was saying she finished laughing at us because we are oh. uh, doing this. Hey, Stan Taffel is on with us. Oh, hey, Stan. Our good friend um happy Ma Ma man riley happy man i love the names people give themselves happy man riley asked me if i collect films okay. you can see steve does yes i do i actually have some within reaching distance hey mauricio could you hand me that like that film there yeah just for no reason to in fact i actually have a print of uh reason and emotion here really good print give me the can oh, too. i give want me. it you want I'll, I'll i think i would sell it to you or give it to you or whatever are you gonna are you, are you gonna auction it is that the well, I was going to sell it at some point. It's in this, it's in an actual can that, uh, it doesn't say anything, but it's a beautiful, like, Kodachrome print. Wow. I don't even know where I got I it. I sold mine because it turned red. Oh, I really? Have Jackie print. Let me look at this for a minute. I just, I'm, I'm going to do something collectors do. I'm going to open it up to see what kind of print it is. Actually, it could be a tech print. I'm, I personally I'll never. the same thing while you're. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. No, this is tech leader. Tech leader. I think it's Kodachrome print. What does it say on this one? Can you tell if I held it really, really close to you? Here we go. Or on there. Yeah, here, here is the print. What is Kodachrome, I think. I see a broken sprocket hole in there. I don't know if you can see anything. It looks like Kodachrome from here. Yeah, it's a Kodachrome print of- From 2,300 miles away. Well, I think, I think we will, we will one way use my shirt. another, we will let you uh, at least look at it or scan it or have it or something. Um, yeah, my films are going to go at some point. I'm going to sell films. I have a lot of a lot of film prints that I. Uh, I, I think I, it says. Sorry, everybody. Sorry, I didn't mean to talk over you. Reason and emotion. I, Reason and emotion. And I've got a, I've got a, a beautiful thing I just acquired in a collection. So it's like a Technicolor. Although again, is this Kodachrome? This is one of those Hulk cartoons. One of those Mighty Heroes got the gray soundtrack. It's got the black. Oh. Um, but it's a, it's a, it's a mighty, it's a Marvel superhero cartoon, the Hulk. Ever loving Hulk. Yeah, it's one of those. 
So mm -hmm. do I collect film? Well, film seems to collect me or collect around me or something like that. And Steve, of course, it's now what is that? Is that your like home collection? This is yeah, this is the this is the stuff that's in the basement. This isn't the stuff in cold storage. Right. This is just the stuff that's here. So uh, it's most of my cartoons, honestly. By the way, I was just about to wipe my hands from the dust on that, and I didn't want to. I was just going to use this cloth that was on my in my lap, but it turns out I forgot. It's Mauricio's T-shirt for the three <laughs> that he licensed, you know. And uh, <laughs> but it's it's a. I'm going to wear this. I promised him I would. So you, you know, it's too this bad the that festival, the way we went at the Alex Theater, which which by the way, I might as well plug that there is going to be a. Stooge Fest at the Alex Theater at uh, Thanksgiving weekend, opposite Comic Con, which is going to be happening that weekend, supposedly. Anyway, but I digress. You, know, you were saying, Steve? I don't know. I wasn't saying anything important. Okay, well, I will read more of things, and we have much more to talk about. Digitize it first. Uh, Steve, you should know that Happy Man Riley is Riley Owen. Oh, cool. Yeah. That's awesome. Okay. Hey, Riley, how are you? Yeah, there you go. Um, what the hell? I'm gonna have to go back and read. Are we something. gonna Are we gonna yeah. talk about Tom and Jerry cartoons? Well, we're gonna. Are we gonna talk about? I was gonna talk. Well, let's get out of the way the uh, the whole little Audrey thing from today that you posted. Oh, okay. The um, no, what we were saying before you went on. I had just added uh, uh, Christian. I'm not. I'm not looking. I should be looking at it right now, but um, maybe I can pull it up real fast because I really want to look at it. Um, if you go to, if you, it's totally interactive. If you go to cartoonresearch.com and, uh, and you go to the, today's post by Steve, um, hang on one second here. I'm just going to, I'm pulling it up myself and it's taking very a long time for me to do that. Uh, here we go. And then uh, if you go to that post, I added to the bottom of it, Steve posted a beautiful Technicolor print of, uh, the Supreme Court, a 1953 Little Audrey cartoon. Now I'm looking at the thing that Christian posted that I posted under the embed of the video. And um, he compared um, with uh, six frames or three frames actually, he uh, compared a Harvey Toon print uh, to Steve's you know, original Technicolor print. And holy moly, I mean, I'm, you know, I wrote I wrote uh, right there, here it is, the difference between what we grew up with versus what was ori what originally was. And it's why we do what we do. I wish they could um, all look like that. You know, I mean, it, it, God, can you imagine that? I mean, look at this title card. I mean, that kills me because the title card looks like crap on the, um, on the Harvey Toon one. And you really can't tell what's going on there. It's seaweed or something in the background. And the fantastic, beautiful painting, that beautiful I, I, background painting that's there. And then I never noticed before, the, the pun is accentuated. It's like the C is in a different uh, color uh, than preem court, C preem court. They're, they're, they're underlining the pun, you know. The, you know so, we, like, I mean, like one of the things that we were talking about was how Harvey and even companies like NTA or um and would um i mean these these films were made in technicolor so that yeah. if you were if you were to try to do a release for television then you would have to take the three negatives and combine them now um now in eastman color and so you'd have to take those negatives and, and make a new combined negative and reduce that right. but but every one of these companies was a little lazy about it and maybe smarter because they were dealing with you know television in the 50s and 60s so what they did instead is they they took a print, and sometimes it looks like maybe it was a print that was already around, but in other cases they may have made a print, and they take a print and just lob off the titles, yeah, and then add their title in Eastman positive, and then they would make a reduction of that whole thing right onto a sixteen millimeter new right. negative, right. So part of the reason right. that you're seeing them bad is because this print that we're watching would be used as kind of their master. Yeah. And then they would reduce that to a 16 millimeter negative. Right. And, and a lot of the time they wouldn't bother to do master positive stock. They would make, they would use positive stock. I, I only know this because I've ended up with, actually, hold on. I know I shouldn't look for this while we're here, right? 
I don't know. No, sure. This is, we're just winging it. I, I have the negative for, uh, for one of the NTAs here. And I, I the negative for one of the NTAs. Okay, I'm curious to see what that's all about. And I'm not finding it at the minute. Darn it. Well, um, I want to mention uh, that when I did my, my show at the um, Museum of Modern Art in 1995, uh, we borrowed from Harvey uh, some of their original 35 millimeter prints, which were exactly what you're saying. They were Technicolor prints with spliced, and on, spliced on Eastman Harvey Toon logos. And those were the master material for not only making uh, 16 millimeter copies for television, but, uh, but also for making uh, later on uh, one inch uh, transfers to uh, video, which is what they used on, you know, in the 1990s for the Casper show in the 1990s. Oh, wow, Magno Sound, what am I looking at? So here is, here is the neg for NTA's version of Suddenly It's Spring. So what they did is they took a positive and they made this negative. There, there's what the heck. Let's see if I can get that. This wow. is the soundtrack negative for it, which is just a piece of black and white film with just the soundtrack on it. And then, da, 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 da. so here's the uh, here's the neg on Ektachrome for suddenly a spring, and this is what we used for the Blu-ray, or yeah, for the Blu-ray and the DVD. So there's suddenly a spring. So this is what it's upside down, but you get the idea. Wow, okay. that's amazing. So, so what they did is they would just make a, you know, they would just make a reduction from there. There's, there's what a neg looks like on that, which is, um, you know, like that's probably red because it's blue. Mm -hmm. So, but but what's funny is that they must have run these things to death too because their negatives were really dirty. Like they're full of little white dust. There's the shot of Raggedy Ann at the end of a uh, suddenly it's spring. Wow. That's so, so did you transfer that and we're able to push yeah. a switch and make it reverse? Yeah, we just, exactly. We just brought it into, well, I think we actually probably flopped it when it was in Telesini. Right. This was back when we did it. These were done on a, a shadow, an HD Telesini. The new scanners are even better than that. But, wow. um, but this is what's funny. I, I, I need to point this out. So you see where it says backward printing? Yeah. So they, they put this damn thing on positive stock. So, so the, the, this is something to note just about um and um, and and uh, uh, NTA's commitment to quality. Right. First of all, they're using Duart Lab and they're using Movie Lab. So that tells, <laughs> that tells you something there. Those were the cheapest lab. Right, that's um, why their and, prints always go. Uh... But but if they didn't do that, honestly, I wouldn't have this negative right now because it got left there, you know, for 40 years. They never Steve, claimed Steve. it. Steve. Yeah. So this is the public domain VH, VHS cassette that I grew up watching. Oh. This is <laughs> what got me into everything I'm into now. And like a couple of years ago, I rediscovered this and and it unlocked, you know, uh, doors in my brain of nostalgia of, of these cartoons. Like that's why I love a uh, Cobweb Hotel. Um, oh yeah. But when you guys posted this little Audrey cartoon, it like, like I was telling Jerry, it opened up this door in my brain that I Good. I got reminded of that cartoon, and that's from this set. It's <laughs> on here, but they have her listed as Little see. Lulu, number fifteen. Oh, that's funny. Oh yeah, Supreme Court, Little Lulu. She's yeah. on the cover right there with, with Little Audrey. Oh yeah, they're right next to each other. Look how cool. They're like one over here. Anyway. So, so in, in some ways you can understand why the quality got so bad because <laughs> you're, coming from, you're coming from this nice 35 millimeter print, yeah. which is already a couple of generations down. The print is already a couple of generations down. So then you reduce it to 16 millimeter and instead of using what is known as fine grain stock, which right. is what you're supposed to use, right. fine grain stock. Instead of fine grain stock, they printed it on print stock, which is cheaper and um, quite honestly is way, way higher contrast. Now, why is that important? 
the, 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 as if we're if we're doing this like a like a Socratic method, why is that important? It's it's important because it immediately high conned everything. And uh, have you have you seen the Puppetoons prints that NTA oh, made? Talking about, go ahead. Yeah, yes. Not only not only are they red, but it's impossible to see anything because everything's really light or really dark. Right. Because they put it, they made a negative onto positive stock rather than use a fine grain or a lower contrast stock. Which but, but here's my question though. In 19 whatever, 1955 or whatever, when they made these, did they ever look good? Did they look good then? So, so know, they did. Or two? If you want to get a good, hold on. Do you want to get a good print? <laughs> well, there, there are good prints. And, and why would, why would there, I don't want to say they weren't tech, but there was some great, coder, great oh, track. There, were, there are some good prints of the um and &M. What it really gets me is, did you notice that those really good ones have a different logo? The did you notice that? I'm, I'm like down here hunting for one yeah. without much luck. I, I mean, what, why was that? I'm trying to figure out why the ones that were printed in what I'm going to call tech, but it's probably Kodachrome, and they, they seem to have a different logo on them. Yeah, I, I'm not getting that lucky. I got a print of flip flap sitting back here. Okay, so here's why. So that... <laughs> This this thirty five millimeter print, right? Yeah, is put to a piece of Eastman stock like we saw here, mm -hmm. and then there's a print made from that. That's called a contact print. Yeah, um, that's how this print of suddenly it's spring is set up. But we're talking about the earlier ones, so they would take a print like this, Supreme Court, yeah. and they make a direct reduction onto Kodachrome, which is a reversal stock. So it's positive to positive coming from 35 millimeter down and they're beautiful because it's first generation it's it's yeah, well, it's, well, it's, it's well, 35 millimeter directly to 16. Wait, what wait, what explains the logos though why is they're, that... they're the older prints they're the they're the 58 59 prints this this negative dates from 60 right here wow. so it looks like it looks like in 58 and 59 i think 58 and 59 might be the first two years they were making color negs on these things because mm -hmm. they were doing black and white ones in 56 i think 55 56. You know, did you know did you ever notice uh on my um my old cartoon research and maybe it's still there my cartoon research page about paramount original titles uh, when i was originally doing it some guy wrote me in and i just reprinted his email directly uh where he, he some guy wrote and said oh i worked on those yeah we 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 rubbed out the technicolor and we put the little, you know, things in so, and so, you know, you don't see the Paramount titles on the, on the camera. And he says, all done to cheap. He, he was completely aware how cheap they were, you know, screwing these films up. Uh, oh, yeah. I don't know. I found that fascinating. You know, that if somebody's still alive who remembers it, ruining our childhood. It's funny how, how no. little foresight it was that they're ruining original master material. It, it, did, it like, just didn't matter. It's like my friend, uh, my friend Andrew, Andrew J. Letterer, who's on the internet, and you can all find him. But we used to talk at length about all of this stuff, and uh, there was this feeling of a lot of people in our generation, at least us nutty people of our generation, where that that day, that rev that revolutionary day when we realized that Harvey tunes were actually Paramount cartoons. I'm okay. talking for me, it was like way back in the early '70s. It was like, you mean these are Paramounts? These are actually theatrical cartoons that Paramount released. And um, uh, it was like, re then, then hunting down original prints with the titles became a thing, you know? It's, it's um, funny how, like, I think that we're cut from the same cloth in these ways. Yeah. I actually just discovered something that was pretty cool. Like while we were sitting here, yeah. I, Ira Gallen sent me a bunch of commercials. Okay. And this one is, uh, and, and they're all from a few specific places. They're all New York-y. Like right. Everything that he has is really New York. <laughs> and this here was cool because I started to unravel it and I'm like, it's, it says Nabisco. What does it say? It says honeycomb. Nabisco honeycomb, right? Yeah. And I'm looking at it and I don't know if I can get this quite, maybe I can put my shirt behind it, but it says Bill Sturm. Oh yeah. Bill Sturm. Studios. How cool. I, I didn't know Bill Sturm had a studio. Oh, yeah, I did. I knew that, but that, that's really cool. That the, I didn't realize it was on the leader like that. And so it, it's a, it's it's a uncut. You know, it's it's not a broadcasted print because it's got the original heads and. Oh, no, neat. 
That's but, great. And, it, and it's 35, so we'll we'll you scale must have it. gotten it from the studio somehow when they were going out of business. It's like me and uh, Mike Kazala. You know, we we getting all that playhouse that playhouse stuff when they went out of business. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what this spot is, but it looks that's a one minute. I mean, it's a minute spot. It isn't a 30 second. Wow. So I, I'm excited to see it. You know, but but he gave me all of this. Like he he gave me. There's a yeah. reel back here. Ira's the coolest guy, actually, you know, I mean, so well, I, don't mean to, I don't mean to boast or say this, but I think I've told you that or maybe he, he told you himself, but I, I believe, in fact, ask him, I believe uh, he credits me for, as does Colin, for you know, it's your, getting it's your fault. started in collecting film because they had no, they just asked me, where do you get things like this? And I basically told them. And then that was the beginning of them collecting. And uh, yeah. So this this here uh, Ira's Ira's okay. He's okay with me. This is more stuff from Ira, but this is actually from uh, Joe Oriolo Productions. Ooh, what is it? It's a pencil test, uh, animated by Myron Waldman and Bill Sturm, um, yeah. as a test for Raggedy Ann and Andy the feature. Oh, really? I, I guess they were trying to bid on doing the feature. That'll go on your uh, Raggedy Ann and Andy Blu-ray that you're going to release someday <laughs> of the future. That they will never let me release. By the way, by the way, I, I, maybe we shouldn't. If there are things we shouldn't say, let's not say them. But we should always. If say. If, if, if 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 we couldn't we put that Raggedy Ann feature on this Twitch channel? We probably could. Well, all right. We know. By, by the way, there's a new scan of that feature. Really? Like a a new scan. You think you did it or somebody else did it? Uh, someone I know did it. But okay. We just looked at it. They they borrowed a couple of my prints just to, oh. but 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 the main print is a different person's and it's is it, it a, is it a good know. really good quality? You know, the 20th Century Fox logo doesn't look as scratchy as it does on yours. It looks good. Yeah, yeah. it looks better. <laughs> um, God, it's hard That's to find because I, I mean I mean I we all know that film has a lot of flaws, but isn't it great? It's just really cool looking. There's, I like it. It's it's funny, you know. I'm I'm really glad that we had the chance to show that at, uh, you know, out in the animation block. Party. Where, where did we show that? We yeah. showed the animation block party with, uh, right. and we had out a couple of animators that had right. worked on it. And yeah, what a shame, great. you know. It's it's just weird. Like there's there's very little will to get all the entities together that need to be together to put that film out. Right. Um, it's it's sort of owned by Random House. Mm -hmm. uh, but they can't find any of the material on it. They don't know where it is. By the way, uh, somebody somebody has written in. Uh, there's no cop. There's copyright. Oh, 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 okay. I won't say what I'm not going to talk about. So they're writing about copyright stuff and Twitch. I'm not going to talk about it right now. Oh, yeah. Oh. All I'm going to say is uh, check out. Uh, just keep checking the site on occasion because you never know what's going to show up. Um, somebody's asking me, I'm gonna, I'm sorry if I, I just got distracted by somebody's asking me, uh, what was the first film you got? I feel like that's a good question for you too. But let me just, let me just quickly say what my first film experience thing was. Well, I mean, before this is after somebody showing me that they had film and, and they were running it. And I said, how do I do that? Uh, the first actual film I ever got, I put it online. I believe it's on YouTube. And it's no big deal. It's the trailer, the original theatrical trailer in 16 millimeter for A Boy Named Charlie Brown. And oh. uh, I bought that at a comic book convention. And that was my my little first foray into collecting something 16 millimeter. And I brought it to school. I was in like, I must have been like a junior or something in high school. And I let I asked the AV people, could you just run this for me? I wanted to see what it looked like. And they ran that film. And that was the stuff that dreams were, were made of for oh. me. That little boy named Charlie Brown, it contained that music and the, and the sound and the color picture. And, um, and I still have it. And I put it on, it's red as a beat now, but it's, I, I put it on YouTube. But it, 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 I have no feeling for the boy named Charlie Brown. I saw it at Radio City Music <laughs> Hall when it first came out. I have no particular love for it. The trailer is nothing, but you know what? I, I obviously have a very, a place in my heart for that trailer because uh, what it meant for me in, in the beginning of collecting 16. And I have many other stories like that, but Steve, why don't you tell us one of yours? Can I, can I leave for a second and go Please. get it? Go get it, go I'm get it. it. I will entertain the, uh, the people in the chat room. Uh, we're gonna go back and look at some of the chat that's in there. I'm, I, I won't ignore you if you uh, put it in, I'll run through it and see, I'm not really completely paying attention here. 
Um, but uh, let's see, uh, Nick Kramer, good to see you here. Your favorite scene in Magony and Andy is blue. Uh, I don't know if I have a favorite scene. I actually like all the early stuff where they're uh, singing songs about, you know, uh, the, the Raggedy Andy song at the beginning, I think is one of my favorite things. All right, here's um, mine. <laughs> it, what what is the real title of the movie that flaming i, I assume that's the excerpted castle I think the, I think the title is flaming guns this this sadly isn't the this is the first film i got but it isn't the copy because it mine got destroyed i destroyed it oh i just running it to death but this is super eight sound yeah Be beggars can't be choosers it, my parents bought me a super eight projector and so because I was going to, you know, make some animated films. And uh, we went to Kmart and they had a closeout area of like film and they had a couple of Popeyes. Uh -huh. And I, I bought one of those on my second trip, but I bought Flaming Guns because it had sound and we had the sound projector. So. Wow. That's, and, that's you, you, well, you just reminded me and I'm not going to uh, change my story, but I forgot that I did collect six, uh, eight millimeter when I was younger. Uh, six. I was talking about sixteen with the point oh. Charlie Brown. Uh, I did. I did. I, I did. I do remember buying Castle Films Tarantula, and I do remember <laughs> buying a, a couple of Flintstones uh, in eight millimeter. And uh, I have to think about what else I bought. But at Castle Films, those boxes to anybody who collected films, they had the the best box. Oh, I remember buying Popeye from like Ken Films, you know, Atlas Films, things like that. I bought all kinds Here of is my first sixteen millimeter film. Meaning, this is the first Christmas night. Look, and it oh. still has writing on it from when I was in high school. Wow, your first film is a little king, and then you ended up putting out all the little kings. I think that's pretty yeah, cool. yeah, yeah. Look, I, I even I even typed on the front. Wow, <laughs> by Sunglow. Yes, that's great. <laughs> it's it's funny though because it's it's now on a reel that says uh, "Saka by Baby." Oh. I don't know why. I don't know why. I, I love having stuff. Some face stuff on them. This, this, I think, is the print. Hard. I think that the uh, the censored stuff is from this print, but then the other, the the body of the film that on on the Blu-ray I'm working on is from a really nice TV print of it. Like official films did TV prints of these too. That's oh. that's something I think a lot of people don't know, and sometimes they're from a different negative. Oh, that explains a lot of things to me. I always wondered why Columbia Pictures, I think Columbia has some of their their, their 35 millimeter stuff with the uh, official film's titles, I think. Maybe I'm they wrong do, about yeah, that. Yeah. But I, um, I've seen things like that don't make any sense like that, like TV prints, like you're saying. Um, in fact, I have, I think I have some Columbia cartoons that are, have the Columbia, hmm, I'm going to think about this for a minute either the Columbia logo or the Screen Gems logo, and then it goes into the official film's titles and then goes yep. into the cartoon, right? Yeah. Very strange. You know, I was thinking, we, we, we never forget our firsts, and I say first with an S because suddenly I'm thinking about um, some of my early, other early 16s, like a, like I, I think I told you about a print of uh, uh, Slip Porn King of Polaroo, which I think I may still have that's black and white that I bought from a store in Manhattan. Um, <laughs> Things like that. I mean, I remember buying all these weird, early, early things and uh, you know, perishing in, Colin, in the early '80s. Colin would call me and yeah. talk about Peerless Camera and how, oh, you could just go there and there's Terry Tunes. Yeah, and I, I didn't believe him. Like yeah. it just seemed, it just seemed like an impossible dream. Well, the weirdest thing is, yeah, that that was uh, when I was working out of Mice and Magic. I feel like I've told this story before somewhere, uh, but since this is a new podcast, I can do it fresh. But um, when I was working out of Mice and Magic, Leonard and I went up to Willoughby Peerless. He knew somebody there and they allowed us to go upstairs that's above the store. And they ushered us into a room that was like something I, 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 gotta, I gotta recreate this in a movie someday. It was kind of like you're shelving back there, but not, no, but not. It was like bookshelves and it had, you know, those white boxes that we used to get films, you know, that would come yeah. in a white box that for 400 foot thing. And it was every Terry tune against a giant wall and like you literally could go to the wall and pick out the title every one of them was like, there like one of these like one yeah. of these yeah one of those exactly I, know I was writing on yep. there like that. yep yep and it would it had the title of the cartoon 
And they seemingly, in my mind's eye, they had them in order, but maybe I'm wrong about that. Maybe they were in alphabetical order, but it was every, every tune. And we just sat there and they had a, gave us a projector and we could watch anything we wanted to watch. And that was the way we saw a lot of stuff back in those days, 16 millimeter. And this was like the, the, you know, VHS and tape had just barely begun and it wasn't a thing yet. So this was the only way we could watch. It was the only way to, yeah. and when, when I was first collecting films, T Todd Tucky had shown up with a whole table of yeah. Van Buren's. Yeah. And I wish, you know, at that point in my life, I didn't know all those titles that well, but now all these, and they all had original titles. Like they were all, let us <laughs> praise Todd Tucky. I, I don't know if you know, how well do you know him or at all? I love that guy. <laughs> Todd, if you're listening or seeing this on a video, I, well, I, we have great memories. I, I haven't been really in touch with him. I have seen him and communicated with him throughout the years via the internet. But, but back when I lived in the New York area, we used to go down to Todd's place in uh, Philadelphia, I believe. And, um, there's just something about him. He's got a manner. I don't know anybody else who speaks like him or talks or or describes a film like he does. He's very good at describing technicolor prints of cartoons. And <laughs> find his stuff on. Uh, he he posts a lot of videos of he like a, he'll run the first ten minutes of a cartoon that's in gorgeous tech, as he will tell yes. you. And he'll that's how the film shows were the same. He would do the same thing at the film show. Yeah. I mean, he, 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 would, he, would, he would lavish so much praise on the print, on the print quality. It's not about what, what the content was. It was about the print. That reminds me of, I'm a big fan. I have them in another room. I, I'm not going to get up and pull them, but Home Movie Wonderland. Where it, was that before your time, Steve? No. Well, yes. Yeah, yeah, but I had lots of Home Movie Wonderland prints over there. At the, the catalogs. I was, I'm, I'm trying to collect the catalogs they, now. They got busted. They got busted for bootlegging things. I'll bet. I hear all kinds of stories, but their catalogs are the greatest. The guy who did them, they, they spent too much time, way too much time on a catalog listing these, these individual prints. He only had one print of something, but he spent like more time on, on this. And he described in detail about the print and what it is. And everything is great. No matter how crummy a film is, it was great. You know, it was a classic and he, I mean, I, I, it's it's just wonderful to read these because it's I laugh reading his catalogs because it's such a it's such a different time. Out. You know what you know what else was great to read was the Thunderbird catalog. Oh yeah, you I haven't know, seen that in years. I haven't seen one of those in years. Yeah. He described all the Betty Boop cartoons and he had Betty Boop and SOS had it started with it's a hell of a storm outside and Betty <laughs> and you know like it was just a great description. And, you know like because buying just any like even just having one print of something was it, it was it was people don't understand back in those days you know you could not get this stuff oh you, you guys know? are so lucky like yeah. like just the idea of being able to cool just it's a home movie of, wonderland catalog yeah, it's a home yeah. movie wonderland yeah show it if you can find another an open page from it that but would be really being cool. able to see this stuff was great you know it I remember being at the film show. I, I bid on. There were there were people watching a print of Cole Black, the uh, you know the the band um, uh, Warner's cartoon, and I had never seen it. I just couldn't even believe it existed. And so there were people bidding on it, and I ended up coming up with the biggest bid at seventy dollars back then. I finally said seventy dollars, and it was everything that I'd made that day selling films. Back in back in the uh, I'm going to say 1970, 71. I mean, this of course dates me. I'm like 15, 16. I'd go to comic cons, the earliest comic cons in New York City, and there'd be some dealers with a 16 projector at their table, and they I still remember this running what we today would call a Jackie print of uh, yeah. like the first Superman cartoon at the table. And, and it's like really tiny, but it's the first Superman cartoon. It's being run on this projector. It's in beautiful color. And like, how, take my money. It's that classic, what is it? Like, it's like 60 bucks or something. And that's like, like 200 bucks or more today. I mean, it was 60 bucks, but you it know. It seems like uh, they were always about 50 or 60, didn't it? Okay, here's a home movie Wonderland page. But here's what's interesting. I'm just going to point out quickly that he, he did them in two colors too. He had to run it twice through, go to, at the Xerox place, like in black and white, or in, it, using black, and then he used a color ink, not on that page. And he, he would then, and so he had two colors. And I can't really read any of these things, but he's, he's goes into depth 
<laughs> this, this looks Find just them like, online. They're hilarious. That's all I'm going to say. It looks just like Movie Collectors World did or ads in the big yeah. reel. Yeah. The, the, the big reel. Yeah. There would yeah. be people that would get the big reel delivered, delivered to them express mail so they could yeah. get the films first. Kellen Kellogg was one of those people. And so <laughs> I would, when I'd finally get my copy, I'd be calling everybody and I'd say, did Colin Kellogg just buy that? And sometimes I go, no. And I'd say, it was Mark Kosler, right? And they'd say, yeah. Oh, I, I see. Stan. Those two people, yeah. you know? Yeah, Stan uh, sent me something. I'm going to look at it later. Stan, it sounds really good, whatever it is. Oh, I see, I see, yeah. All right, I'm going to check that. He sent me some home movie Wonderland uh, memorabilia, I believe. Uh, the, nostalgic uh, about things that no one knows about. I know, but you know what? That's the beauty of this. Maybe we'll attract that one person who is probably Stan Tapple, actually. But we'll uh, we'll uh, go go off on that. Um, the yeah, we're, we're just talking about the, the days of collecting. Like By the way, I want to hold up. I, I'm going to now word from our sponsor once again, Mauricio. Uh, this is one of his many. Oh, that was really cool. Uh, and it comes on a beautiful thing that looks like that. Betty Boop and her pals. And um, I, I love the fact that you're doing Fleischer stuff. And, and this, this yeah. is the thing is, if you're going to do Fleischer stuff, you, you would hope to do it really well. And look at, I mean, look at this. He's got this full color. Yeah. Do you even believe that this is happening? It's just cool. He's handing me for people. So maybe in the future when we do this for real, we'll give out like little uh, prizes or something for. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's like oh, early. Oh, oh, well, I don't know. Hopefully you can see these in the plastic bags. This is from Poor Cinderella. Look at that. Wow. That's the. That's so the cool. uh, I think he's got a bunch of them here. I want to show you these. These are is actually you, great. Look at this. We're having this little mini golden age of renaissance here, you know? Uh, here's can, Betty. Can keep here's, it rolling. Here's Skivvies from Poor Cinderella. She's, of course, appropriately in two color. I don't know if this is coming in in focus or not, but I hope you can see it. It, it is in the one camera. Yeah, it is. I know, but I don't know about in the real in the real world. I have no idea if you guys can see this. It's, oh, that's better, yeah. Anyway, and Beavis and Butthead, but that's another story for another time. Um, uh, Audrey is public domain or who owns Audrey? Little Audrey. He's asking me about if little who owns Little Audrey. Um, I did a post about Little Audrey. I'm actually fanatic about this now. It's not about Little Audrey, the character in the famous studio cartoons, but the, the origins of that. Um, the um, uh, Little Audrey, of course, is, is technically owned by Universal, you know, Classic Media, uh, DreamWorks, you know, the whole Universal who owns all that stuff would own, you know, the, uh, the, the films in, that aren't public domain and the, uh, and the uh, obviously some of them are public domain, like at Supreme Court, I guess. And, um, uh, but you know what's interesting? We always talk about oh, they did. They came up with little, little Audrey after they losing the rights to Little Lulu. But yeah, that's obviously part of it. They knew they were going to not go one more year with that with Little Lulu. But I didn't realize Little Audrey had a history, and that's why they took the name. And it was a public domain history. You know, Little Audrey was a mischievous little girl in legend and uh, tales uh, and and storybooks for years, decades, things that go back to the turn of the century, the last century. And uh, it was it was in theory well known in the 40s. Uh, little Audrey was a name that the people knew that meant mischievous little girl who laughed. That's why she giggles or she does that, ah, ha, 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 you know, that laugh she does at the end of all the Little Audrey cartoons. That was, that was the thing that was known about the character of Little Audrey. So they just basically owned her, they basically, said, let's just grab this and make it ours. And they did, and it still is. And people don't realize that it's it's something that goes way, way back. And I did a post about it. I did a post about that. And I think that's, that's so funny. So fascinating. Um, can we quickly discuss this? Uh, uh, Mauricio was asking us if we can discuss something. I don't know what it is, but we'll find out. Oh, that, oh, that, <laughs> take that down, take it down. Tell us what this Get is. rid of it, <laughs> my eyes. <laughs> Oh, what, is, what is this? Oh, DreamWorks, no, DreamWorks, as I said, DreamWorks, who owns Classic Media, who bought Harvey Entertainment, uh, knowing that they own, you know, uh, the Harvey characters, um, uh, did a show called Harvey Girls or Harvey Girls on the Block or Harvey Girls Forever. I have never heard of this. Oh, I, I have. I'm, I'm kind of glad you never heard of it. It's on. You can find it. I think it's on... Netflix. Net, is it on Netflix or Amazon? They've got those DreamWorks gack faces like this. Yeah, I mean, has to go like that. It, it's they took little lot of little Audrey. Um, I think um, it doesn't look like them at all, though. Little it's, dots. 
you know, they it's took not even close. Though. Yeah, it, I know they just. You it, know what, it looks what's closer the, to it looks closer what, to Bruce Smith stuff. What's the point of reviving something like this if you're just gonna throw it out the window and not? It makes no sense to revive something like that. And then it looks like happens, somebody wasn't interested in working on it. No, I don't know the reality of the ratings and how successful that is. But it's, let's assume that that it came out and nobody's heard of it and it's it's kind of a bomb. You know, like uh, what what was the point of? You're not getting your, your you know, the audience that even knows what it is, and I don't think that audience is, cares to watch a children's show about this. But I don't know. I, I and plus the original, the Warren Kremer, um, Steve like Mafati, else. Warren Kremer, Steve Mafati artwork in the original RV comics is really appealing. It's really appealing. You could do some really great stuff with that, you know. And it bothers me to see it. It's bothering me to see this, Mauricio. It's, uh, it's funny how not good it is. Why they change the design at all? Why bother? That's what I was just saying. I was just saying. I, mean, I, I like a lot of new stuff that's coming out, but yeah. and you know, I have a, a lot of my students end up working in the industry on these kinds of things. But this is kind of bad. Well, so I what don't, studio did it? It well, a friend of mine worked. I have a, a friend who's in charge of it. Actually, <laughs> I was going to loathe to say anything more negative. But, oh, it's DreamWorks did it. Okay. Oh, yeah. it's Netflix. You can find it on Netflix. You know, I mean, when we did, when we did, I worked on the Baby Huey cartoons. I mean, we were like dedicated to keeping them. Those are, those are great. You know, the original and uh, Bob Jakes. uh, And even, and even when Bob Jakes wasn't involved, they did a second season at Universal and they included uh, Richie Rich and they did them in the, in the Warren Kremer, Richie Rich comic book style. They're, they're really cool looking in my opinion. I don't, I don't know why people don't, go back to the, when they take the original source, remi- remind yourself or try to understand what the original appeal of the character is and then work from there, go there. This is just, they gave them a list of names and that's it. And they just made a cartoon around it. That's what it seems like. Well, it's like, that looked a lot like the Thundercats uh, reboot. That it was really bad. And sometimes you can, re- I'm not defending that because I've never seen it, but I, I sometimes you can reboot something in a, in a completely different way. A perfect example is the, the Mickey Mouse cartoons, the Mickey Mouse shorts that uh, Disney's doing. Paul, Paul yeah. Rudd and those folks. Do. Yeah, those, the Paul Rudish runs, right? I think that's great. Those are fantastic, in my opinion. I mean, you, you can reboot something. It's, you got to find the integrity in it. They also respect the original characters, if you actually watch that. So I, 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 I mean, you know, there's lots of ways to do it. I'm, I'm obviously, I know I'm, everybody's against uh, reboots of characters. I don't know why. I'm a big proponent of the idea. Um, you know, a lot of us hang, you know, bitch about, I don't, but bitch about, why don't they bring this back? Why don't they do it the way they, and then when it's, when somebody does it, everybody bitches. The way they, you know. when, it, when somebody does it, everybody bitches. The way they, you know. like you're what's going on there? Oh, it was, that, I think that was my fault. I, oh, I, oh. I, I opened Twitch for a second. Oh, don't do that. Or Sorry. if you do it, I think you can put it on um, silent. Oh, there's Miss Minutes. Oh not, yeah, not really. But uh, <laughs> oh, oh, these are those new. Are these those new? No, these are the uh, 1990s ones. I think. I think. No, this is the newer yeah, stuff. These are those new ugly ones. Oof. Really? Yeah, this is a bad reboot. Is that, is that what you're trying to show? Bad reboots? Yeah, I don't think I want to see bad reboots. Reboots. Then we got to show oh. what not to do. Yeah, don't do this. Oh. Um, Who else from Universal are they rebooting? Because Woody Woodpecker. All- may- if, if it's making watched. you wish that you were looking at a Paul Smith cartoon, then you're in trouble. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's Paul Smith is your bar. <laughs> Don't do better than this, you know. The, anyway, um, I, I just wondered if anybody was asking questions and stuff. You, you mean know? in the uh, sidebar? You mean in the? Uh, oh, yeah, oh, 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 yeah. yeah. Oh no, yeah, somebody's mentioning the thing I don't want to talk about, and I'm not gonna do it now. We'll do another class, uh, another class, another, <laughs> this is how I teach. Um, we'll do another uh, podcast in the future about something, oh God, I don't even want to mention it because I don't want anybody to go out and find it. I'm sorry, I'm not even gonna mention it. It's a reboot that's absolutely awful. And I don't like that you even mentioned it. My name is Strum. Strummer, don't mention that. I will do a whole show on that in the future. Um, it's something I had anything to do with. Although I kind of did, but I didn't. Uh, Plausible deniability. I didn't know what it is. So I'm, I just, 
it's so bad. I don't want anybody to see it because it's it's oh god. I, Here's something again, I worked on, but don't watch it. I didn't work on it. Oh god, you're making me begin to talk about it. I it wouldn't exist if it weren't for me, unfortunately. And that's the only it's the and then and then I had nothing to do with it. Anyway. Um uh, did, 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 okay, I'm sorry, I'm going back, I'm scrolling back to see if I can uh, uh, understand some of the questions I'm seeing there. Yes, yeah, somebody else, 57, um, I'm, I'm bidding on that, so nobody bid on that? Okay, thank you. One of my favorite cartoons, we'll talk about that at another time. I, and I'll scan it. I'll see scan if I get it, it. And then everyone will see it. Yeah, I mean, it's seeable. It's seeable now, in my opinion. Yeah, I know, but from a beautiful 35 yeah, IB, yeah, yeah. you know, I mean. If I get it. Yeah. You'll get it. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. No, Hector Manuel, don't. I'm on it. Please, don't. Yeah, don't, don't. Don't. Because Jerry's going to send it my way as soon as it's there. Right, right. I mean, I rarely bid on anything anymore. Probably just talking about it right now is going to blow it for us, but we'll. Uh, we, didn't, we didn't talk about it. Yeah. It's a, yeah. it's a Woody Woodpecker. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'll, I'll put it this way. If um, in the future, in the future, if, you know, I mean, we're always looking for 35 millimeter Paramount cartoons. I'm also, we're always looking for 35 millimeter tech scope, para, uh, uh, Terry tunes, any, I don't care if it's, if it's uh, Hashimoto, I'll take any scope Terry tunes uh, in 35. I have a lot of them in 16. As there's, there's a shame that I actually, and they're probably still here in Ann Arbor somewhere, but I worked at a movie theater and I traded this guy a whole bunch of cartoons for a scope okay. lens. He was supposed to pick out any 10 that he wanted. I literally had like 70 Terry tunes from the 60s. I had like most of them. Right. And I had a lot of them anyway. The uh, I do too. I think if we put our collections together, also with Charles Brubaker, we'll have the entire... It, all of them in tech from the fifties. I mean, Actually, everything I had was in was in beautiful Eastman red. Oh, really? Were they they were they the later ones, the post Gene Deitch ones? Do you recall? Yeah, it was yeah, it was all. It, it seems like the minute Deitch left, they went Eastman. But I, but all I had, the Deitches are in tech. I had every I had every Mighty Heroes though, and I had all I had, the yeah. Hector Heathcotes, and I mean, I had all of them. The um, yeah, I, you know, all I mean, thirty five. I have the last Deitch cartoon in, in Scope Tech, which is, uh, ooh, which is, uh, the, I think it's the Fabulous Fireworks family. I actually have, and, and Tale of a Dog is another late one. And both of those are in tech and they're like really like the end of the line for the Deitch thing. And then literally the next one, like a Hector Heathcote is in Eastman color. It's almost like, you know. Uh, it's like, the, right? you're, you're, you've, you've had it enough filet mignon <laughs> it's time for, it's time for a swanson dinner again <laughs> um oh my goodness i'm looking for i don't even we should just talk i mean let me see what else uh, sorry i mean uh, I, I just figured people were probably asking things okay yeah um and a few of you who are sending me messages that only i understand just send me a, just send me a, a text. Don't, like, don't waste time. Every, everyone's trying to be really cryptic. You know? Yeah, I get it. That's cool. Um, the um, Willy Wop, who currently owns Willy Whopper and Flip the Frog? And how difficult was it to license it for Thunderbean animation? Is that a question you would answer? Yes. Okay. It was difficult, actually. And it, yeah. it's, David, it's David Gerstein's fault more than any one person because he kept me on it. And Dave loves Flip the Frog. Yeah. But, but this is what happened. I started going to uh, a film show called the Syracuse Film Show. And I I'd, I'd tried, th this is the thing to know about knowing someone versus not knowing someone, is I had sent emails over the years about trying to get these because I was interested in it. And Dave Butler had, you know, had licensed them back in the, in the late 80s, early 90s. And anyway, so, they were owned by Blackhawk Films, film slash film preservation associates. It was a guy named David Shepard. Right. And so I wrote him over and over again and wouldn't hear anything. And that's usually what happens when I try to license something, you guys, <laughs> almost always. So I went to Syracuse Film Show and lo and behold, uh, David Shepard was there. Hmm. And so I had to sort of stand in line against all the other friends of his that were you know, talking with him. 
And finally, I got a chance to talk to him. And I said, hey, is there any way I can license Flip the Frog for me? And he said, well, for the next two years, it's still under license for Image. They had a 10-year deal mm -hmm. with Image uh, DVD. Right. And, and he said, but when that's done, come talk to me. And so the next year I came to him, <laughs> you know, the same film show and said, hey, how about the comic color cartoons? How about the Rainbow Parade cartoons? Could I, is there a way to use your material? And he said, one more year, one more year and we can talk about this. Wow. And so the next year I go, this is year number three now. And I go there and uh, Shepard's got a contract kind of worked out for me. Like right. he knew that I was going to show up there and he said, Oh, sign this. He said, well, let's make a deal on this. And we did, we made a deal at Syracuse to wow. release the flip the frogs. Although, and, and then this is what, so he, he's, but he said positively, absolutely no to Willie Whopper. He said, I might let you use one on, you know, as a bonus feature for flip the frog, but he goes, I don't own all the Willie Whoppers. We, we, we couldn't do it. Hmm. So, so then I started to be a little bit of a sleuth and I tried to figure out, all right, if you don't own all the Willy Whoppers, where are they? Right. And um, so I, I'm like doing research and I found a modern, modern sound films catalog online. And then I'd remembered that I'd heard earlier that they owned the caveman somehow. And so I called up modern sound pictures, which was in Oklahoma, right? A little tiny outfit in Oklahoma. And they're, they're, they were a 16 millimeter rental outfit. They were like international film service right. out in um, New York. Um, and so they rented films all over and kind of their huge claim to fame is they had the rights to King of Kings, the late twenties, you know, is that Cecil B. DeMille? Yeah. Um, yep. Anyway, they, they had the rights to that film and they, they seemed to survive for many years by renting that to churches who would show that, you know, and so they had a bunch of prints of King of Kings. Um, but they had bought the Willy Whoppers from the company that became Blackhawk, which was Easton, um, Easton Philion or Philon. Um, and they bought the Willy Whoppers in 1960 from them. Wow. So from 1960 on, they had the rights to them and that's, but they'd only, they only owned, they owned, I think four of them, five oh. of them. They owned five of them. They owned half of them, like basically right. 13, right? 12, 13. Anyway, I'm curious about where the negatives were and things like that, but go I, ahead. I will tell you what I know. <laughs> so this is what happened. Um, so I called, I called up Modern Sound Pictures and they were out of business. They, they were sort of in business. They were selling off everything that they had. And I said, is there, is there rights for sale on any of the films? And, um, and the woman who was uh, Keith Smith's daughter, I talked to Keith Smith a lot of years earlier. Um, but the, the daughter said, yes, um, what are you interested in? And I said, I'm interested in the Willy Whoppers. And she said, I'll get back to you on it. And so I immediately got on the phone with David Shepard. And I said, hey, the Willy Whoppers are for sale. Hmm. Um, and he said, cool, can you give me some more information? And I said, well, I, I mean, I just talked to her for a couple of minutes. And he goes, let me call you back. <laughs> and he called her and bought them on the spot. Wow. And he said, hey, all the Willy Whoppers are together again. And so all of the 35 millimeter material, uh, the 16 millimeter material was for sale, but all the 35 and all the negatives and everything were in a storage facility already. So we had to wait for them to open the storage facility and find whatever they had. And they had some negatives, they had master positives on a few things. Wow. They had really crappy copies of one of the color ones, Davy Jones Locker, they really crappy copy. But, but in all of that research, I found an article that Modern Sound Pictures was gonna to try to reissue these films in the 70s, but they, ne they never seemed to have done it. They did make new negs on them. Wow. And it, so I have the negs you know, from that and I scanned all of their negatives that had the new title card on it, but where the original negs went, who knows? There was a camera neg for two of the, they owned the color ones, they owned Hell's Fire and they owned um, David Jones Locker. And they, so the color negs were actually in the reclaimed area at UCLA for MGM's films. So MGM had tried to pull back films that they thought they owned and realized they didn't own it. And then they kind of had this holding area for them. And that's where Hell's Fire was. And that's where David Jones Lacker was. But UCLA also had the camera negative on Caveman, which is, I think, the single best looking camera right. I've seen on those. So that's, that's the little story. So they ended up all being back together because of those phone calls. And I'm so glad 
because then we were able to put them all out. You realize your place in doing this. I mean, you, you know, again, the Lord's work, as they say, you know, it's, it's nobody would do this. Um, but, like, well, it, it, it just took all this coordination and it just happened, you know? You know, I always say this because it's true. David Gerstein makes a lot of, makes fun of me occasionally uh, because I'm my line to him a long time ago, 20 years ago or more was uh, nobody cares, nobody cares about this stuff. Let me let me explain it to you. Oh, you see those, that title card there? Hey, Mauricio, can you go back on that title card for a second? Yeah, let me... It's, it's squeezed. I think he's got it zoomed in a little bit. Yeah. Folks. We'll bring it back. But, Billy um, Bopper. Nobody cares about this stuff. We, you, you, everyone listening right now, we all think this is the most important stuff in the world because we care about it but in the real world outside nobody cares There's like 10 of us and the, and the thing is what well, you why is that a thing i should tell you and i'm trying to depress you it's just that why don't we get good stuff you know um all right stop there for a second oh yeah Hold so on. this this title card mm -hmm. is on the negative to hell's fire it's and then the negative to hell's fire is unusual because it's 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 both of these were shot successively and they seem to be the only Cinecolor Iwerks films that were actually shot successfully. The rest of them looked like they were done with a prism system. And oh. so there's a prism that's split and there's two separate yeah. negatives running at the same time. But this one was, every other frame was uh, the other color record. So there was a dial that went in front of the camera that would record the red record and then the blue record, you know, successively. I have a feeling this title card never really made it on the film. Really? But it, yeah. But there was one frame of it, like in fade out at the front of the negative right. of Davy Jones Locker. But it but it was completely on Hell's Fire. Wow. And so that's why we put it on the set. It was the cool thing. But I'll bet you that, that it didn't get released. What's your question? Um, as an outsider, Say, Willie, uh, um, I'm kind of curious why the Of Iwerks legacy okay. well, hasn't been as promoted, you know, especially like considering Rob's how hardcore Disney fans are great. with Mickey and Boy, the original stuff. Why do you think there's that disconnect? How can you, I guess, Disney isn't... Dis really Disney doesn't own it. Disney doesn't own them, so they have no interest. Um, it, 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 from our point of view, the Iwerks family, Leslie in particular, has been trying for years to bring more attention to those things. Uh, the fact that the cartoons were maybe not enough of them exist in a way that was ever really syndicated well um i mean there's how many how many comic colors are there i mean most everything's in black and white there's a lot of reasons why these you know haven't been around or i guess it's just a library in general you think people would be like he's the guy who created mickey and you, 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 yeah, you think that you think that more people would care but a lot of a lot of the comic colors have turned public domain and so there's this automatic assumption that there's no way to make money off them. Right. Uh, something else to consider is that uh, these these films were never they, these were never big star films. I mean, they were in the '30s, and MGM, you know, promoted them. But after that, they belonged to celebrity productions. And um, Pat Powers distributed the flips separately after that, making making new negatives and distributing them in 35 millimeter. It looks like he maybe even distributed cartoon films. Well, you know, but the big, the bigger thing, if I can interrupt, is that they, they weren't owned by MGM, and they, they never were. Yeah. There was never a big entity behind them to care or push them, to, or to promote them, or in, in anything. Look, at Columbia owns Scrappy, and they do nothing with it. I mean, you know, it's it's up to the company. It's up to, you know, uh, here's another thing I've been teaching my class, which is, and I can't underline this enough to everybody, including you, Mauricio, the. When they made these films, especially in the 30s, I'm going to even say through the war, until they came up with the Blue Ribbon reissue. When, when was that? After the war. When was the Paramount Champions? After the war. Up to that period, these cartoons that we love so much are ephemeral. They were of the moment. They only existed to be shown that week or month and they were basic, basically gone. The thing you read about, about uh, Three Little Pigs were played in the theater for a year, that was a big deal because that never happened. And I mean, to other cartoons, that happened to that. That was the, that was the exception that proves the rule. Um, 
these cartoons were like daily comic strips. I actually keep this. <laughs> I say this and I don't have it ready. I actually keep this near my desk for my students when I talk to my students. They don't even know what a physical newspaper looks like. But the, the newspaper comic strips, which were a bigger deal back in those days, I and mean, that's another story. But you read the comic strip, you get a laugh, and you, you throw this away. You, you crush it and you throw it away. It's not meant to be kept. It's a thing that exists for that moment. That's it's what a, cartoons, it's like a radio show. It's a moment of yeah. entertainment. The, the, the cartoons, why are the, the, the uh, 30s and 40s cartoons so topical about things that are going on? By the way, Mauricio, there's an echo or something? Yeah. Okay, I hear it. Okay, the, um, uh, the, um, that's because they were not meant to be seen beyond a month or so of their release. Um, because the, there was gonna be another cartoon from another studio, from their studio, whichever studio you're talking about. That's why, that's why cartoons uh, are so repetitious. Uh, I, that's why I'm amazed that the Fleischers and Warner Brothers aren't so repetitious. You know, some people say, well, I don't like the Pepe Le Pews. They're the same thing all the time. Nobody knew that back then, meaning that they would see one once, they might see another one, they may, they may never see it again, or they might see another one in a couple of years. Uh, similarly with the famous studio cartoons. I'm amazed more cartoons aren't more repetitious. They weren't meant to be seen back to back. They weren't meant to be seen. They weren't meant to be collected. They weren't meant to, you know, so why isn't, you know, the Willy Whoppers and the Flip the Frogs existed in their time and like a vaudeville performer, you know, they got old and, and retired and disappeared. You know, um, that's part of the answer. We live in an era where, where television came in and people realized there was some value in bringing these old films back to TV one way or another. Um, and no and there, were, there were companies that would try to mass collect independent yeah. productions, just, just like classic media really gobbled up a lot of the little tiny right. private entities that, because, right. because they were all about intellectual property and trying the idea to get the IP on something, the, the films are secondary to that. Right. You know, right. Get, getting something that they could actually market or make something new out of. Absolutely. Um, the the iWorks cartoons were a part of some of those big packages. They were owned for a while by a company called Exclusive Pictures. Exclusive Pictures, um, and an, there was another company called Commonwealth, and Commonwealth owned a lot of things. At some point, both Exclusive Pictures and Commonwealth's materials merged together. And it's interesting that Exclusive owned the Flip the Frogs and some of the Willy Whoppers, and Commonwealth owned the uh, the color stuff. They owned um, they owned the later Rainbow Parades, and they owned the um, they owned the comic color cartoons. So all that stuff got merged together uh, through a purchase by a company called Teleprompter. And Teleprompter is the first company to you know to actually make words on the screen you know for the deaf. Um, Teleprompter also bought a lot of silent films yeah. and titled a lot of silent films. They had like whole libraries of things. They bought educational pictures and other things. At some point, educational pictures got spun back off. But all of this stuff was in the same collection as the SNA films, the yeah. early, the 13 early Chaplin films. Right. The, reason, the reason that David Shepard and the Easton Fillin wanted that package wasn't the iWorks cartoons or wasn't the Rainbow Parades. They wanted those Chaplin films. Right. And so maybe part of the reason that these were never that promoted was because they were always secondary to the things that they'd wanted. Right. You know, and and it's, also why, to... it's also why this goes to what you do. It's also why for decades, uh, the versions of these films had to be titles or they're not as good as what you're doing now where you're going back to the original, you know, uh, you know, negatives or uh, whatever, whatever the early positives, master positives and things like that, which nobody thought or cared to do that because why bother? It's why not? Oh, we got a good 35 printer. We can dupe it. That's all we need. Yeah, right? we have, there were teleprompter had made 16 millimeter negatives. Commonwealth had made 16 millimeter negatives. So that's traditionally what got used whenever anything was printed. Even Blackhawk on occasion would make a reduction neg from 35 but only if they didn't have the negative from Commonwealth. Right. So that's the, the, the by legacy. The way, by the way, a thing that must be praised about Steve is, and it's only something I feel like I've only learned in recent years. I, for many years, as we all have, we all know about two color text, in a color, true color, but only recently have I been seeing 
restorations by you and others. I'm, I'm thinking about Republic with the Roy Rogers films and the uh, King of Jazz that came out from Universal. Um, only recently have I seen two color stuff restored magnificently, a, a Warner archive recently with uh, the uh, House of Wax, uh, Mystery of the Wax. Oh, it's so beautiful. Yeah. And, and some others where, where when it's done right, the way they originally made it, I mean, to me, it, it looks, obviously it's not exactly Technicolor, but it looks, it looks good. I, I, now I understand why they released these films that way. Why Republic with this true color, it always looked red as a beat. I could never understand why they were doing that. But when you see it restored, oh, geez, it's just like, it's just like real full color, except it's kind of, you can tell it's like a little bit pastel or something, it's missing something. But I mean, anyway, what you did with uh, the Willy Whoppers is fantastic. I mean, I mean, literally no one, we, we've really never seen it like that. And, and, and I don't know who else would care. I mean, you kind of have to, and, and I think this is the thing is you have to want to do the best you could with it because it, uh, honestly, a raw scan, you could look at it and say, okay, good enough, and just move forward. Um, and, and so I think, I think there is a, a trick to keep trying to do better and better with each one of these things if you can do it. Um, right. you, these ones were so much fun to do because I, I don't think Hell's Fire had been seen fully really since then. You know, there was a, there was a fragmented piece that was on, um, which was on those great sets that Image did. Right. that Greg Ford right. curated, you know, there, which was really cool. So that to me, that was the biggest, the, the reason I did the Willy Whoppers first is because nobody had seen a lot of them. And they're, I mean, Flip the Frog had been around a little bit more, but the idea of trying to get them all back together, I just like stuff like that, I guess. Yeah. I just like the idea. Well, Flip is you know, you, you, um, you, uh, hold on a second. Mauricio has a question or something. Um, yeah. He's going to come on. Here he on. comes. With Hell's Fire, is that a uh, anti-prohibition cartoon? It, it totally is, yeah. It, it's it's all about, I mean, the, like half the cartoon concentrates on uh, prohibition, like you're getting his ass kicked, you know, and being in hell already. And, and th this is funny, though, how fast Willy Whopper is willing to change his loyalties. Yeah. You know, I mean, he's he's willing to do the devil's bidding almost immediately. Everybody else says, "No, we're not going to do it." And Willie's like, "I'll do it." <laughs> <laughs> Which I think, uh, licensing was there ever any merchandise for Willy Whopper or any of these characters? There was back in the '30s. Yeah, a little bit. There was yeah. a, there was a like a lunch pail or something. Yeah, there was like a like a like a pencil box or something. A pencil box, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, um, I'd love to make Willy Whopper merch. I think that'd be super. Well, cool. and you go go. It's Leslie, you have to license it from Leslie. I think. I I don't know actually. I don't know what you'd have to do. I have a deal yeah. with Blackhawk about it. Or Blackhawk. Uh, I, I don't think you have to deal with Blackhawk on it. I think it's I think it's Leslie directly. Okay, great. Blackhawk owns the films, but it looks like the family trademarked the characters, and so you're dealing with the trademark rather than the actual film on those ones, very so. Yeah, that was the issue I had with the flip, the frog stuff yeah. I initially made. And, and actually, stay tuned because I'm in talks with Leslie about possibly rebooting Flip. So everybody That's awesome. I, I would love that, you know? Well, I would love to see a flip the frog pin inside the uh, flip the frog, uh, you know, yes, Blu-rays yeah. that you're putting out. Wouldn't that be cool? I, don't know. I would love it. This, this summer for me, like the giant thing to get right is flip the frog. That's the giant thing for me. And I mean, I mean give us the, the other, there's all these other things. Give us the update of where you are with uh, Flip the Frog. Well, <laughs> so, well, so we're going through we're going through right now and looking at all of the films and seeing anything else that bothered us. That's kind of the big thing. And um, when when I said that Laughing Gas is done, the Laughing Gas is done. The other <laughs> the other version of it, we had it done. <laughs> we had it done. And so Becca went through the whole thing again and just. I mean, she made she made copious notes and said, "There's flashes here. This stuff this stuff is too hard to fix in PF Clean. We, we could do this one in Resolve, or let's do Photoshop on this." And so she made all of these notes, and then she's gone back and done it. Right. You know, like so she's doing all the things that I haven't had a chance to. So if that's one aspect of it, the other aspect, there's still two soundtracks missing that I want. That I know that there's better versions at Library of Congress. We're waiting on those. And then there's three of them that got scanned that are sitting at Blackhawk right now. 
and I just have to afford <laughs> to get them out of there. I got to get them out of Hawk, but I will this next week, I think. All right. Well, we're, we're all with there. No. But there's, all, there's and also, what's going on with the uh, Rainbow Parade? Rainbow Parades is mastered. I actually, it was supposed to be replicated yesterday, actually. Yeah. But um, I pulled it because Bob Kester died. And so I, I said, can you hold on? And I've made a new version of the master because I wanted to put a dedication on the disc for him. And so that's what I just did. But it's I mean, done. It's done. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's so funny because the things that you're trying to do, uh, we're all trying to do, you know, is either stuff like Terry Toons, Fleischer, Iwerks, but then there's the, I know you always have your eye on the obscures, the, you know, where are the jerky journeys and the Daffy Diddies, you know? Well, you, found, you found one of, Blackhawk scanned one of those. You found one of those, like the best, we've, we've cleaned that up, by the way, it looks great. Which one are you talking about? The three minis. Oh, three minis, yeah, okay, okay. And there's another one too. There's, a, there's another, another one I have a black and white, well, I, I don't know, did I send you? I don't remember what we did. I don't. There's I, a black I and white one. I scanned uh, Rumble. another one. I've got two of them scanned. Yeah, the, the Rumble, Rumble in the Jungle or something like that. Um, yeah, I think, the, I, I think I've got that scanned. Yeah, and uh, uh, I mean, we got to find we got to find them. Well, yeah. Another question from Mauricio. Can I, I Mauricio's wanna, my kind of my co-host. I want to show you guys something. I'm curious if you guys have known about this. Check this out. I'm curious if, if you and Jerry have known about this. Check this out. Are we allowed to have hair jealousy, Jerry? I know my my hair's gone. It's it's you, you can't know, tell. It's, it's you know. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's yeah, I didn't even think about it with you. Yeah, Everybody's so vain. I'm so vain about myself that I. I'm not see, thinking. Do you see the video? You, can you see? Yeah. Okay. This is Eminem. Right. Yeah. Yeah. We don't hear it. But that's no, that's right. fine. You know, Mary worked with them. Oh, there's uh, fiddle sticks. I think. <laughs> Did you guys know we don't watch these things but the thing is is that is fiddlesticks public domain no no Ooh. but but i i think he can get away with fair use there yeah honestly because it's not yeah. a significant part of the film yeah it's eminem this is one of the biggest rappers and he had flipped the frog and went flipped the frog in there i should i should bug him you know mary my other half mary does animal acting shoots and, and there was a little period where there was a lot of film stuff going on in Michigan and so she ended up doing she did a video with Eminem at one point huh with Eminem and another she because she does you know the animal acting basically means that you're the the wrangler and making sure that the animal does well and there was a there was a wolf hybrid dog on set that day that and Eminem was actually kind of scared of it but don't tell him I said that I asked the stupidest question in the world I'm, I, I just because I'm, I'm stupid and I'm not thinking about it but um a Motown, meaning uh, Detroit, Motor Town. Um, is there still a major industry? It's still they still make cars there. Oh my I don't, god! <laughs> they still do, right? I told you, like the whole Michigan is car car central. All right, yeah. all right. Well, I'm always hearing about how things are poor there, and I'm like, I'm like, if they're making cars, how, how poor can it be? Oh, all right, all right. Some uh, away from cartoons for a minute. Yeah. So. Um, I, I work in a place that was the School of Arts and Crafts. The yeah. School of Arts and Crafts was started by um, the three auto, the three big automakers, which are still, oddly enough, the big three automakers. Right. And even though they've absorbed a lot of other companies into them, um, Packard also gave a lot of money to it, and then Packard eventually merged with Chrysler. But um, the transportation design section of CCS, which is College for Creative Studies, is one of the biggest departments. People from the auto companies in auto design all work at CCS, teaching auto design. And right. the big three companies. So you're like, it's like, it's like the Cal Arts of, of cars. Yes. Yeah. yes. Yeah. And, and, and so Toyota sponsors our lecture series wow. and Toyota hires the designers. These, these kids are designing some of the brand new cars that come out. That's why the Detroit Auto Show is a big deal wow. because it's, it's home territory. Um, no, I'm, just, I'm just, you remember yeah. when I came out there and we, we passed, it was like, didn't we see like burnt out buildings? You, yeah, you have to come to Detroit now. You would never believe what's happened. So it changed all, in the few all, years. All of that is gone. 
Jerry, all of that is gone. Really? Like the, the downtown area is gorgeous now. Like really? Because remember, have, I was there, it was awful. You know? It's all gone. That's all gone. You can find all of that stuff still if you keep going out more and more. All right. I stand by my question. I know it was stupid. I said it was stupid, yeah, but I think Detroit, I had valid reasons for asking. All right, all right. Detroit's honestly still one of the most divided towns racially in the country. There's the black areas and the white areas, and the downtown has become more and more gentrified. Right. But what we really want to see is all those little areas start to get fixed up. Mexican town, funny enough, has Mexican become town. it's become beautiful there yeah. because people bought the houses and fixed them up. Right. So, which is, I mean, you remember when North Hollywood used to be really shitty. Yeah, I know. It was real. I mean, in the nineties, I remember I the know, early. I 90s. know, I know, I know. It, it was still shitty. Like, parts. Yeah. I had somebody pulled a knife on me in the early nineties. Right. It was shitty. You, you're hard pressed to get somebody to do that now, and there's still not good neighborhoods. You no, know, and I keep pressing people to pull a knife on me. No, no, no. no. It's, I'm, but, I'm yeah, I mean, to do it. And remember, downtown Hollywood used to be a shithole. I mean, it was the worst. Yeah. That's when, I'm, when I moved here in 86, it was like that, yeah. When I first came out, I couldn't believe it. Like, I, I thought Hollywood was so nice, and I, I was walking, and it's, it was awful. My problem was when I moved here in 86 is that New York was worse of a shithole uh, in 86. So but, Hollywood, but, although but, it was a shithole, but, didn't look I, as good. But Times Square was cool when it was all nasty. Well, now I have to say in, my, in, in that I imbibed or took advantage of that. I went to a lot of those 42nd Street theaters and things back in the day, and it was dangerous. But um, but yes, it, in, in, with rose-colored glasses, it, it you know it is was cool. And you, it's you sad see, that you it's see taxi driver and you wish that there was a world that still had an area like yeah, that. I was in that world, yeah. Yeah. I'm glad I, it's not like that. I don't know, seeing Detroit get cleaned up has been wonderful. And CCS has continually helped with their community arts partnerships. And, um, and the the schools have helped and uh, honestly a lot of industry down there yeah downtown uh, quicken loans has been a huge quicken loans is centered in downtown detroit and oh, so they're they've hundreds of people i mean it's one of the biggest mortgage, mortgage companies in the country and they've personally fixed up a lot of the buildings downtown didn't they fix isn't it the, the don't they have the stadium or something yeah like they, that? yeah there's a whole stadium, stadium. yeah the, the it's beautiful down there and then, honestly, the uh, the Illich family, who owns Little Caesars, also fixed up a lot of downtown. Cool. So they personally just put a lot of money in. It's I'll have to come back. So wait a minute, the Jam Handy building is still there? Jam Handy building is still there. And yeah. what's in it? I'm not, I'm not saying that that's used as an entertainment venue. So, you, you know, before COVID, there were weddings there and there's events there. Oh, the really? big three have events there. They've unveiled new cars in the Jam Handy building. Just Would that be cool like, to kind of get married at the Jam Handy building and then run like a jam, have some Jam Handy educationals running? Well, you know, Rick Prellinger, you Rick know? Prellinger came to town and ran a bunch of Jam Handy educational films in 35 millimeter. They brought in a portable 35 millimeter wow. projector and they ran Rudolph Huge and they ran uh, Working Hands and they ran um, a whole bunch of Jam Handy industrials and you talked about them. That's Seeing cool. those projected huge in 35 millimeter was yeah. so cool. Wow. Rudolph, Rudolph and 35 Big was amazing. Let's talk about that for a split second because um, I'm still to this day talking to people who don't understand why, you know, what the big deal is about showing some of these in a theater. You know, I mean, it's, it's just it's a different thing. Too. What? It's, it's such a different thing, you know? It's completely different than watching it on Twitch. But we, you know, we, we're still Twitch. doing the cartoon show at the Redford Theater. You know, showing 35. And you, honestly, you've been a champion of doing these shows forever, <laughs> you know? Because of the fact that when you come to it, it, it you're going to see something you haven't seen, even though it's a cartoon you might have seen a million times, you didn't, know? Didn't um, you miss doing those on the big screen at Kellogg? I do, and I'll be doing them again in later in the year. I already have a couple of things already in the works, so. Um, you keep saying that. Yeah. I've never seen a cartoon ever on film, so I've yet to experience Do you hear this? Do you hear this? Mauricio, what the hell? He's never seen a cartoon on the screen. And he's like, he's like, to me, he's like, you keep saying that, that you do that, but I've never We seen need it. to have some shows. Yeah. That's what we're planning. Yeah. Let's, let's do it. Got to get you that scan. I don't know. This is actual film, right? You're going to be showing actual film yeah. negative. Oh. Yeah. But we'll also do scan uh, digital stuff too. Steve's stuff, 
like those Willy Whoppers on the big screen look pretty amazing. Now I'm curious, oh, yeah. I thought film negatives were very delicate. So mm -hmm. we don't run the negative. We don't run the negative. We run, we'll a, run a print. We run a okay, print. So a print is a copy of a negative. It's the it's yeah. a, it's the it's the reverse. Negative is negative and a, a positive it looks like a cartoon the way it's supposed to look. You yeah. never project nitrate these days. Oh, that's another thing. Hardly anyone. One, once well, in a while, well, someone will project nitrate. Well, we can't. We can We have to, at least two venues, maybe three out here where we can. Uh, the Academy, their various theaters, and the uh, uh, oh, the, the Egyptian can run uh, nitrate. It's so, it's so rare now because it's yeah. so dangerous to run. With yeah. Technicolor prints, then with the whole three strip process, so you guys get those three strips, combine them, and then make a copy of that to screen? Is that- No, we, no, we just run the old film. No, yeah. well, wait, wait, wait. Uh, so like, for example, when I showed you, Stan, if you're still out there, when we ran uh, Cobweb Hotel at the uh, Egyptian, that was a nitrate 35 millimeter positive print, an, an old, you know, an old print from the, from the 30s that we ran at that theater. It, wow. it, it by being nitrate, you can't run that in a normal movie theater. It has to be run in a special theater that has the fire. The firemen have to be standing by in case it blows up, you know. Um, and so the there's, there's be, great precaution. Yeah, the, the, booth, the booth has to be super fireproof. You can't make a copy of that. And screen you can, but it would be better to make it from the original neck, right? Yeah. Uh, you know, we, we could do that. And it would be pretty good, probably. But I, um, I, love, I love all the complications of this because... <laughs> We're, we're trying, M Mauricio, the, it's, it's like, it's like all other really technical things. There's like all these ways to do it. Yeah. All these ways. There's all like, kinds of different ways. Well, we, what Steve tries to do, what we all uh, uh, try to do is to do it the best way to go to get, to get the best source. So that, you know, I mean, you is know, it much easier now with technology. I assume it must, must be much, much easier to do something like this. Right. Well, I mean, to scan them is, God, that's a lot easier than it used to be and a lot less expensive. Um, but but in terms of running an old print, like we could take that Supreme Court print and run it in any theater equipped with 35. Right. It's a safety print. It's in good condition. It's got some splices right. that are annoying, but um, but it would actually run through a projector just fine. Yeah. Nitrate we, ran stuff, we ran stuff exactly like that at the at the New Beverly Theater, the Quentin Tarantino Theater you'll come to those when we start doing that again we ran stuff that looks like you you would go nuts you would you would blow your mind completely if you saw what we did at that theater and many other theaters i've done this set but we used to run we ran a casper spree under the sea night it wasn't nitrate but it was a, a technicolor print from the 50s in the same era of that little audrey oh my god was that jaw-dropping you know it, it looks so technicolor projected looks even different like, I think they were getting a pretty nice representation on a scan, yeah. but oh my God, like running a film print just has a whole different feel. By the way, what, what, what is the transfer process of that little Audrey you just showed us? What That was, that was run on a Sintel, the, the new Black Magic Sintel, a brand new scanner. Um, Black Magic, the, the one we keep talking about? That's the one we're talking about. It was a 4K scan. And then I had, uh, I had a 2K version made of it. And that for a lot of these that I'm not, you know, I'm, I don't need a 4K on it. So right. even though we're scanning everything 4K, then we make a reduction. I'm going to ask it. another silly question, but why do you, why would one need a, a 4K versus a 2K? Why, why would if one? You, if you had a 4K, that's the original quality of the film. It's actually, if you were to try to measure what the quality of a 35 millimeter frame is, it's probably closer to 3K, honestly. Mm -hmm. So 4K, you're really getting all the information on the film. And so you if you wanted to go back to a film print or if you wanted to release it in 4K, mm -hmm. it's, good, it's good to keep that as a native format when you're dealing with digital because then you can always reduce from it. Right, um, and as you said, you can take the 4K or even maybe even the 2K and make a 35 millimeter print if someone yeah, you wants. Could if you, yeah. And yeah. You, you could make, if you took that scan, you could make a better copy onto a piece of film with that scan than you could photochemically then you could, the old way of doing it would be to make a contact print where you're just taking that original piece of material and sandwiching it with new stock and putting light through it. 
The so all of the photochemical, for example, you tell me, help me to understand this for myself. Um, we did a photochemical restoration of uh, Raggedy Ann and Andy the fly shirt to Reeler. Yep. Uh, as far as I know, there's no digital of it. It's, I, I know it exists on 35 because I've seen it. And, and, uh, and I know that they've saved it. So, but you would have, you would have, I mean, things were different two or three years ago when we did this, but, but you would recommend that if we had gone all the way if digital, you got a whole digital pipeline, then we could have, all right. Well, the, 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 the difference between the digital pipeline now yeah. and, um, and going completely photochemically is we're at a point now where a lot of this nitrate is um, in being kept in a very cold environment which yeah. is good. Um, an additional problem with that is it shrinks a little bit. And so if you're scanning a film print, you have a, you, you are free of the mechanical problems of going several generations down. So if you're, if you're, if you're thinking about like, let, let's talk about Raggedy Ann and Andy for a minute. It's a, it's a two reel Fleischer short. Right. And so the, um, it was done successive exposure. So for each reel of that film, there are three reels of film, right? Because it's because each one of those reels is one third the length because it's three negatives. There's there's the three color records next to each other. That's that's why if you watch an old cartoon, sometimes you'll see every minute and a half or so you'll start to see some little white speckles, right? That's because that's the end of that Technicolor reel, wow. and it's spliced into the next piece. Um, so when you, um, so if you're taking those successive negatives, then you have to line up photochemically. You have to line up each one of those frames and make a new negative of each one of those. And then that negative is sandwiched to make a completed negative, basically. So you're two generations down from that material photochemically by the time you have your new negative, um, which is, if you have really nice Eastman stock now is gorgeous. But if you were to scan that, you have no generation down and you image directly to the negative. So you're automatically gonna be just a little bit sharper. Um, it's just a better, pro any, any newer restoration is being done that way now. So it, it would be uh, hard because of, you'd like photo, the photochemical labs to still have work. There's not that many of them left. The, um, by the way, I wanna mention this, uh, um, well, you've seen, uh, Kausler has this, uh, but uh, that when I was working on Totally Tuned In and we, they were, st were, st were storing things whether we needed them or not for the show, thank goodness. And one of the things was, uh, uh, He Can't Make It Stick, I think that's the name of the title, yeah. uh, that cartoon. And um, as you may know, the version that's around is Kausler's print, which is basically no picture for like four minutes, and the, but it has the soundtrack. And then at the four minute mark, there's the picture and sound. And I think that's it. And it's like half the cartoon is, is missing the picture. And I think what it is, is, is because the, they had the second half, three, uh, the, the, the successive exposure negative for the second half picture, the picture, right? But they didn't have it for the first half. And the, keep in mind, the second half is as large or larger than a regular cartoon because it's the same yeah. thing printed three times, right? I mean, yeah. so, right. so yeah. I mean, it, I don't, you know, I'm just mentioning it because that's a, that's a concrete example of, you know, of something to do you, with that. You wonder, you wonder how that happened, you know, that it was probably it's, it's labeled misplaced. to a two. I, I'd like to think it's misplaced in the, because if they have all of the rest of it, they, they should have the other part of it. It's, I mean, it, it, it's it could mislabeled. Be. The yeah. Hell's Fire was labeled WC Fields. <laughs> you know so really yeah who knows who knows why it's that's a oh, yeah. people, people, well this is another one of those nobody cares things it's people label stuff and they don't give a rat's ass about what it is it's the 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 70 millimeter smell -o vision cartoon the tale of old whiff uh with voices by bert lar co-directed by uh john hubley um uh it turns out the academy had a print of it in their archive just labeled cartoon and recently it's 70 millimeter print and only recently in the last few years somebody came to me and said we have this thing and says a cartoon do you know what it is you know i mean nobody knows anything 
you know. In order to find something, one has to be looking for it. You have to be looking for it or the, well, yeah. Or the flip side is if they, if, if, if they never showed it to me, you know, or Dave Strohmeyer, you know, nobody would know what that is. But you know? of course, David Gerstein, who is a genius at this. Yes, helped, David, if you're listening, you're a genius. He helped uncover. Okay, he's not listening, so say what you really want to say. He helped uncover a lot of lost Oswald cartoons by looking for Felix the Cat cartoon. Right. And, and often the archives don't know what they have. Right. And, and Dave, this is why Dave is a genius, by the way, <laughs> because he knows the synopsis for these cartoons. And if he doesn't, he right. looks it up and he figures it out. Right. Who does that? Nobody. <laughs> David Gerstein does that. Nobody. I have my, I'll give you my own version of that, but isn't anything like that, David, he gets all the credit. This has nothing to do with what you just said, except that, except that I learned a long time ago when I was collecting, and this is way back in the Mice and Magic days. I learned that if I were collecting, and I am, and I still do, collecting still photos, original still photos from the old days, publicity photos for the cartoons, which are extremely rare, but they exist. They Gary made- has this file cabinet. Right. He has this file cabinet and he, it's it's meticulously labeled. And he's got, like, he's, oh, wait, do I, what do I have on that? And he pulls yeah. it open and it's all this stuff that nobody has. Well, the thing is, I found out a long time ago uh, when I was collecting uh, animation stills, I, I learned, don't even ask for animation stills. Don't even ask for Tom and Jerry stills. Just ask the dealer, the store, the whoever, or anybody. Do you have any Disney stills? I learned. I learned if you say, if you have any Disney stills, oh yeah, I got a file of Disney, and they give it to you, and it's loaded with one of the stills. That, yeah. They don't know what they've got here, you know. You, you they, gave me a still from an eight by ten of a Columbia. Yeah. Still, and it's obviously shot with a large format <laughs> thing. It isn't thirty five millimeter negative. It's a large format frame. It's gorgeous. Like you see the cell inking lines on it. Right, right, right. That's why, I mean, I, I collected them for doing books is the idea why, why I was collecting these things because they were non-existent. You couldn't even what, what's find What's a them. book? What? What is a book? Oh yeah, right. what is a book? Well, that's the thing. <laughs> and then in the later era, meaning the last uh, 15 years or more, um, you know, you don't even need stills anymore. It's all frame grabs and uh, which can be done really beautifully now. So look, you know, look at that uh, guaranteed pictures presents pests. Yeah, it's one of yours. Oh, is this a uh, this is a Disney, right? Is this a uh, no? It's a, it's a Van Buren. Oh, it is. Yeah. Oh, okay, I'm not really looking at it close. I can see it. Yeah. Here's here's that Disney comedy. Well, you know, you know, honestly, I wish that I was as good at commentary as Milton Knight is, because Milton oh. would always say really funny things about this stuff. Maybe maybe we can one day figure out a way to get Milton on here. You know, and great. watch uh, whatever we put on. You know, that we you know get Milton's thoughts on these things. Yeah. We'll do this. We'll we'll do all sorts of people. Let's look at the chat room because I think it's time for me to wind down a little bit. Um, it's still early out here, so I actually have other things I got to do. I, I got to too. I got to go pick up somebody else's films. I know, I know, but this is fun, and we're going to do this for real. But this isn't even a for real one. This yet. is just a playing. We're testing. Yeah, we're just fooling around and getting the equipment straight and figuring out how this actually. I'm works. only down here in my dungeon because Mary's watching Eurovision upstairs. But you know, your dungeon is a great backdrop. It's fantastic. It, and you know, I've been able to like pull films. You know? And I even like how there's no lighting. I mean, we can see everything, but it it gives it more of a dungeon feel. Well, I wish it was a different time because I wanted to watch Eurovision. <laughs> <laughs> like I saw the beginning of it and it was unbelievably great. <laughs> well, you know, we will, we will work around your schedule in the future. Okay. Uh, but, um, it. but I do like doing them in the afternoon like this because that's easier. Yeah. For well, me. usually Eurovision isn't happening. It isn't like it's always on. Oh, okay. Well, we'll work around. I'll, I'll still see it. I'll still see it. I probably, I know that you've got other things going on here. Let's see. Uh, let's see if I have any questions from the people that I have, we haven't already answered. Uh, we're talking about Raggedy, and I went way back here. Uh, 1929 Mickey's. I can, yeah, there it is. 1929 Mickey's. Um, let's see here. Do, 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 do. I, I love that there's a whole cult of people looking for original titles on things now. That's just, I, I couldn't be happier. Here's, here's an interesting question from our friend Hector Manuel. If I'm pronouncing that right. I think I've in just the, in the restorations of soundtrack. Have you ever found Spanish audio tracks? Yes. That's a good question. Yes, they they exist on a lot of this stuff. Um, 
but but this is this is the thing to know is that usually usually there is a track and a picture that are separate yeah and um if there's if there's a foreign version of it sometimes all you have is the soundtrack sometimes all you have is the picture so for whatever reason those materials never stayed married um there's a couple flip the frogs that exist in spanish well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. They, they, they are, what are you finding when you find that the act, the track separate or the or part the of the print? Yeah, just and the so track. If you find this track separate, is there any thought on your end of including that as a separate audio track on a Blu-ray? You know, I I could I could I haven't. I don't want to delay the set any further, but, but that would but be this cool. Is, this is something to note about '30s cartoons: is they were well aware that it was hard to port these things into other languages, so they do everything they could to have as few areas of, of title cards, as few pieces of soundtrack that they'd have to dub into a different language. So the French version of the flips, and actually almost all the European ones don't seem to have much difference. You know, I, I mean, when yeah. we find a print in Denmark or when we find a print in France, there's no dubbing on right. them. And so, but there is, there is a soup song uh, with a Spanish soundtrack and I haven't listened to it to see what's different but yeah. uh, maybe we should scan that actually you should um there's a couple of people who are nicely sending in things like we could, can listen to us talk all day and somebody named crab mustache is saying he <laughs> thinks it's, this is like listening to our own personal zoom conversation which is, quite well, right. is, is, trying this to is do. like our sound like when jerry and i call each other it's like this yeah we talk a lot about this but i think we, we maybe we're leaving out a few things we don't want people to know publicly yet but um i haven't talked about how properly dressed i am you are properly dressed for this particular occasion for this occasion yeah, yeah good. I, I promise you guys also just anyone that would care i promise you that i will never trademark a character that i don't own <laughs> oh i get that <laughs> i understood that reference Yes. Um, I, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to be that cryptic. Uh, let's see. Uh, somebody wants us to do a memorabilia show and tell. What? I don't understand that one. Um, um, somebody wants to see the friendly ghost in 35. We're gonna I have do to, too. We're there was a print underneath that. Jerry Beck's bed for years. I know. We have to accomplish that. I actually sat on a print and unfortunately I gave it back. You, you, you really slept over a print for many years. I, did. I slept over it. I was a, a religious experience. I would kneel and pray on it, and then I would sleep over it. No, uh, something like that. Um, Avery's I really think that's a sweet cartoon. It's, a, it's such a sweet ending to that cartoon with them deciding to play with him. I, I, sorry. Yeah, I just, no, I, I, I'm, I'm, re, I'm trying to uh, find a next topic if we have one. Um, uh, people are commenting on just things that we've said or done. Um, not really any major questions, unless I, if anybody has a major question, I would say put it in the chat now because I'm not going to find it otherwise. Uh, and um, we will go on from there. What do you got there, Steve? 35 millimeter on man on the land. I think I have a print of that, unless that's my print. No, I have a print of it too. I got this from Canada. Canadian, the, the, magical, the magical Canadian land. Look at that man yeah, on the yeah. land. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's um, it's <laughs> thirty five with vinegar syndrome, so it has to get transferred. But it, it's just cool that a thirty five showed up on it. I mean, never yeah. thought that thirty five IB on it. Now I know I can sell my print. Okay. You can you can tell some things, but look, it's it. You can see if you can look at that. You can see it's really vinegar at the beginning. See yeah. how it's all warping yeah, 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 yeah. at the beginning of it. Yeah. Right. What a shame! It's it's going. Yeah, it will be the dust. But th th well, Steve, I, I don't know when you're coming out, but I will tell you something, and this is really private. But I'm gonna. I'll, I'll, nobody will so know. You, so you're just deciding to tell it on a public. Uh, uh, I know, no, but I, but out here in LA, where I live, and you've seen my garage, I'm physically moving it. Uh, in within the next thirty days, I'm gonna move it. Damn it! Um, I don't know what that means. It's gotta I'm, come out. I know. I was thinking maybe. I mean, I'm going to have movers i mean had movers bring it i'm gonna have my movers come and pick it up bring it there, to there's it. not going to be an actual jerry beck garage sale um i don't think so but there might be i don't know it's it's if i were more organized or i had 10 other people or five people or two people working for me i would we'd all go through the garage pull out stuff for sale and uh, and really have a garage sale what's but. really hard about collecting this is just in general is that you end up with so many cool things and then 
you get to a point where you can't even see them and you will never see them in your lifetime again. Yeah. And so I think it becomes our job to try to figure out where to put these things if we can. Right. right. And then there's some things that are so cool that you want around you like that, that Mary Melodies poster behind you. Yeah. You know, don't give your location because people will kill you for that. I won't. Can I show something I've collected? Sure. Knives. He's, he's got a knife. Wouldn't it be great if he held me up with a knife right here? Oh, I have a knife. But... Does it have Betty Boop on it? Betty Boop knife. Oh, what could be better than that? He's going to bring it back. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't know. I don't hear you do it. I don't know what, what I'm doing. It's, uh, that's that's awesome. awesome. Well, if I'm going to get my throat cut, I think that's exactly <laughs> the knife I'd use. Well, what's awesome about watching this is that I can't do anything about it. <laughs> you know, I'm just like, I'm like helplessly watching. Yeah. I'm here to take his poster. There you go. Betty Switchblade. Yeah, there's people who now want 50 of those Betty Switchblades. You, I, I want to get a, a Wiffle Piffle Switchblade. If you it would mind. be better if it was like a Swing You Sinner Switchblade because there's a lot of Switchblades in that cartoon. Yeah. I, I, I bring Jerry a token of my appreciation. It's literally a token. Oh, it's a teeny weeny. It looks like it's not one of the ones you made. It's a, it's a little Mighty Mouse, oh, little cool. Connie Rosinski. I don't know if anybody. Oh, cool. Knows. I'm trying to. That's what I want to borrow, Jerry. That's what I want to borrow. Oh. Is Rosinski's? Um, is it? Is it Connie Rosinski's? I think so. Um, eight millimeter film that he made with his kids. You know, pretending that they were oh, in a Mighty Mouse. I think it's Carlo Vinci, isn't it? It's Carlo Vinci. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I yeah. have. I have it on video for you. You can have it. Yeah. Well, no, I mean, I, I, I borrowed that print. Oh, I, do I have Academy. the print? I don't think I have the print. I'm no, it's at, it's at the Academy. It, it, Asifa got it. It's at the Academy? At the yeah, Academy. But, you know, I could be wrong, but you know who's got it? I don't want to say names and stuff. So it's somebody who used to run the Asifa archive. No, no, the, the Academy actually has it. How do you know that? I don't even know it. Because I, you told me they you had given it to the Academy and I asked them and they said really? it's there. Yeah. Along with the, um, along with the uh, uh, making a move, making them move. You know what? I could, if I even, I don't even remember that. I know. I remember we having us having that film, and I thought that person. No, he doesn't. He doesn't oh, have it. It's oh, the at the, it. At the academy. Okay. It, it went. It went through the proper channels. Right. Good. Thank God. You know. Yeah. Well, yeah. That needs to be restored in a very good way. Yeah. It'd be really good to do the, the laser graphic scanner could do so good on that now. Yeah. You know? I mean, I just have a crappy copy. If only we had that laser graphic scanner. Now, if only we had, you know, if only you would uh, accept, I guess, well, how do we, I don't even know where to begin. You know, should we, should we do a Kickstarter? Should we do a, a what is it, a GoFundMe? Well, that's, that's what I thought is maybe, we, we all got to talk about it, but yeah. By, by the way, this copy of Swing You Sinners, yeah. the fault of a collector that we all know yeah. It was actually a print that was made as an answer print off of um, UM&M's negative in 35 millimeter, and it was in the garbage. And this particular collector visited that archive and said, oh, can I have this? <laughs> and, and, that's, and they made prints of it. And so another person we know in New York made prints of it. And that's why we have a good copy of this cartoon. Right, right. That's how hard it is to get good copies of these films. Right. And the fluky lucky thing of the one person asking about something in the garbage. I've got prints that I fished out of the garbage at United mm -hmm. Artists when I worked there. You know, I mean, yeah. nobody cares about this stuff. I'm, gonna, I'm just glad that could be the name of my podcast. Stuff. Nobody cares. <laughs> nobody cares you know, about this podcast. You know, we should really call Colin or put Colin on a Zoom because yeah. Colin will not enlighten us with new information, but he would entertain us. Yes. Um, by the way, I want to mention that, that, that this, when we talk about GoFundMe, it's not about GoFunding me any particular film or uh, a particular saving of this. It's about it's about it's about getting Steve the um, the scanner, the laser scanner that he needs, the 4K scanner. Because if we if Steve has that, then the you know everything more things can happen the way we want. Them. More things happen yeah. faster funds though is through this twitch so if people subscribe to cartoon research and they could send tips they could send you know anything they, they can donate to this cartoon research twitch and the money goes to jerry 
which would then, you know, I'm not giving it to him. 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 No, no, I would. <laughs> so this Man, that's is kind of what we're we... hoping. We've, we've just started thought thinking about this the last few days. Mm -hmm, right. So this, this week has been all about thinking about how to make a scanner happen. We got to make it happen. This is ridiculous. I mean, obviously you're driving all around the country. I'm going to New York this Prince. next week. Yeah, to pick up prints. But the thing is, if you had that scanner in your trunk, or if you, uh, you know, it, it bothers me that you have, when you make those extra trips to Canada or wherever to get it scanned, it's like that part is now eliminated. I right? haven't been able to go to Canada in a year. Oh, really? You know, I, I, part of the reason that so many things fell behind this year is I couldn't get any 35 millimeter scanned. That's I mean, why where, without, I, unless, unless you don't want to give it away, I mean, where do you get it? You don't, don't give me the name, like where physically from Ann Arbor is the closest place you can get it scanned. So you, there's there's one place here that has a laser graphics in Southfield that's an hour or so for me. And so I can do some 16 millimeter there, but he doesn't do 35 millimeter. Um, the, other, the other closest scanner is Chicago, which is four hours away. And they won't let me stay there. They, I, I have to drop the film off. And often when I'm borrowing stuff, I can't drop the film off. I've made a promise to the collector it will stay in my hands or I'll get it back in two days or so it, things have changed with COVID especially um with right now I'm driving nine hours out I'm driving out to New York to upstate New York to scan things well, well in these places like upstate New York or even Chicago Chicago I kind of understand but really how many clients do they have to use that machine there I mean there's still a lot of people that scan film there's a lot of people that scan neg and not, not like it used to be, but there's still. I, mean, a I could see if in uh, some big Chicago ad agencies that might have their old their old commercials on on film that they want them scanned. Well, it's a lot of that. a lot of archive a lot of archive work happens these days. So right. people are if you if you think about it though we have you literally have a hundred years of people putting things on film. So there's a lot of things that people want to archive right now that they're worried and a lot of things are going vinegar now. There's a lot of home movies. Right. I mean, it's, you'd, you'd think that all of these are really niche. It's just, it's, it's hard to believe it, but there's a lot of this stuff. Let me ask you a question about the, the company that makes that scanner. What, what's the name of that company? Well, there's the, this is Sintel Blackmagic, the one that we've been using. Okay. It's, it's, it's actually a, an inexpensive at $36,000. It's inexpensive compared to the next one, which is a laser graphics. And that's a $90,000 scanner. Here's the thing though, on the, on the, on the $36,000 one, I mean, it's not exactly on eBay. How many do they make? Do Actually, they make it to order? They I mean, make it to order. They make it to order. Yeah. Make it to order. A, yeah. Sintel was ranked Sintel. Right. And it was bought by a by a camera company called Black Magic. And Black Magic makes some of the best cameras for um for video and film production now. Right. They make incredible equipment. So they bought Sintel and they made this as sort of a more portable, smaller studio solution. Right. Um, and, and there's a, you know, there's enough of a market for 35 and 16 to do so. Right. Um, I want to, uh, somebody, a uh, short hair in our chat room wants to one day do a guest blog on cartoon research, set the record straight on journey back to Oz and its fate once and for all explain some mysteries and discount others. Um, I don't know who you are and that's okay. And I, maybe you're somebody I know, but short hair read my, um, if you, if you can find it, read my, um, I know it's in a book, but uh, I wrote about this film in my book, The Animated Movie Guide. And I know that it has a history and I might have it all wrong, maybe, I don't know. But it really has an interesting backstory. I wish I liked the film, I don't. But um, but uh, Journey Back to Oz, I don't even think what, about what that. A, what a shame, uh, what happened to all the filmation stuff. Yeah. You know, that they just took the negatives to silver recovery. Is that what happened? I mean, That's what happened, yeah. Like they, they did an HD scan of everything yeah. <laughs> and then they destroyed the material. So that they're HD scans, but they're also, they were done in France. So they're also in PAL. <laughs> they're all at 25 frames a second. Well, and what is that? How does that work out for well, uh, I mean, I could convert the TV that easy. you have today? You know, meaning TV, TV of tomorrow. How does that work out for the TVs? of today pardon my ignorance you know well, we have a, i mean we have hd on it but wouldn't it be nice to have a 2k at least oh uh, yeah of um, course i mean and it'd be nice if they because they've zoomed in or whatever and you know uh, removed the crop in the corner i like having all of that stuff 
you know, it, it's just nice to have something bigger to work with. So it's, it's people are asking about public domain. Listen to this. There's some interesting uh, uh, people are asking. Uh, excited to see Mr. Bug enter the public domain in 2036. <laughs> uh, approximately. Hope, uh, hope, and, then hope it says, and then it says, and then someone else said, I wonder how, how Disney will deal with Steamboat Willie once it goes public in 2024. What well, do you, you think about that? Do we think that's actually going to happen? Yeah. We do. We yeah. think it's going to happen. Yeah. They're, they're not going to protest it this time. No, I, I think that they own the trademark of the character. And so they, they, they've spent all this time wisely figuring out how, when it goes in public domain, they can still own it. I have a, I have a cease and desist letter from <laughs> 1990 or 91. Is it framed? No, but I should have done it, but it's on, um, it's, it's on Cinderella uh, stationery. <laughs> Cinderella. It might be from 88 or 89. Cease and desist your bootlegging activities, but go. We'll see Cinderella. It's, it's on the Cinderella letter. Yeah. It's it's not a it's not from a lawyer. It's but it's it's the Disney company, uh -huh. whatever entity this is, asking me to not use Mad Doctor on uh, Attack of the Thirties characters, which was one of our early sets. But so isn't it my, public domain? Is it's it public Doctor? domain, but they they're asking me to not use it. They were asking you nicely. Yes, yeah. it's not quite a cease and desist, but it sort of is. May we offer you two tickets to Disneyland if you would just kind of not use that. Go see Cinderella. That would have been nice if they said, well, you know, you probably could have asked for something. You probably said, all right, I'm, I'll stop. I'm like, I was a kid, you know, yeah. I was 20 years old. I'm like, well, okay. I don't that's, suppose that's off you, the market. Yeah. I don't suppose you'd let me go into Disneyland for a discount or something. So, oh, sure. <laughs> um the, uh, the somebody's asking who did the uh, I, I know the answer based on your an answer. I'm sorry, jumping all around. Who did the destroying of the uh, of the filmation prints? And it wasn't you, Avon, right? Or was L'Oreal? Right? Uh, yeah, it was the, the perfume company that bought the rights uh, to filmation, right? At one point, yeah, is it L'Oreal Cosmetics? Is that right? Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah they, they, uh, I mean, they didn't want to pay the storage anymore for all of that stuff. Uh, Strummer says that the scanner you want is only 30K. I don't know where he gets this information. But the sound head is another $4,000 and then you got to pay tax. And Strummer, you forgot about tax and the sound head. But that's okay. Strummer's cool. Strummer's our pal. Um, yeah, the, the sound head is all important <laughs> because the, the sound head does 35 millimeter optical, 16 millimeter optical, um, and mag. So if you have a 16 millimeter magnetic sound print, it'll do that too. Well, I hate to do this, but I'm going to, uh, but I'm going to, I think we'll end our little chat for now. And oh, this has been fun. some more time. Yeah, this was fun. And um, we will have Steve back again. Uh, as long as Steve is interested in doing this with me, uh, well, happy to have him. I'm as long as I'm not boring, I'm happy. Uh, in the future, we're going to try to get uh, maybe if only by audio, but we're going to try to get my friend, a lot of my friends. I have, you know, like Mark Kausler and uh, Greg Ford and uh, uh, many, many, many other of uh, our colleagues that do you, this. You work. know, what would be fun is for us to do a commentary for Flip the Frog this way. Hmm. That, uh, how, do I, a little group thing. That would be cool. If we, especially with, although I wonder if it would get confusing or if people would talk over each other, but all right. Yeah. It, well, remember we did those ones for the cult tunes sets years ago, which I, which I love, by the way, they're really fun. Yeah. Well, you know, if you listen to um, um, the, uh, we did a, a, a four way on uh, uh, Popeye meets Sinbad on the, uh, uh, I don't know if you guys have this, that Oscar uh, Oscar nominee. Yeah, Oscar nominee I think Ray Pointer set. was in with that, right? And uh, we had Ray Pointer, we had Leslie Cabarga, we had Bob Jakes. I feel like I'm forgetting somebody. But I think I had we had me, and uh, we did it. We did it, and we did it. We did it live, and you, I'm I'm amazed that we did it live with hardly any editing. I think because um, today I wouldn't do it that way. I would have four people. Maybe we're all in the same room, but I'd have everybody say their own thing and then I'd have an editor come in and edit. That's what I would do now. But we did it live back then. So you listen to that. It was pretty good as far as I, as I recall. Anyway. Did we really uh, just talk for like two hours? 
you know, I don't remember anymore. I, I'm on the impression we, we, impression we did it right from the beginning of the film to the, the end. Now, maybe we went over a little bit. And there was some editing. No, no. I mean, I mean, you and me have just talked for like two hours. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Probably. We, you yeah. know, I'm sure we have. I know we could. I know we could do even longer than that. But we have, we have other lives that we have to get back to. Oh, yeah. Um, I think Mauricio has one more comment, question or something, I think. Mauricio, did you want to say anything before I decide to flip off? Uh, flip off this crowd? Get that scanner, I'm right.